I call this the uh, wannabe king's uni. Hey guys, today I'm going to be ranking all the dental schools in the UK, telling you which ones I think are the best, the worst, etc. So make sure you stick around to see what I think the best dental school in the country is. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Ferris, I'm a third year dental student currently studying in London, and I make videos about dentistry, lifestyle and studying. So if that sounds good to you, drop a like and subscribe. Quick disclaimer, before anyone starts coming at me, I just want to make it clear that these are just my personal opinions, based on my own experiences, and also just some research I've done online with regards to the application process and what the good and bad things are at the unis. So make sure you actually research the unis before you make a decision about where you want to apply. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's actually get into this. Okay, so we're going to do the universities in alphabetical order. And the first one is Belfast University, you know, Queen's University, Belfast. Now, Belfast, I don't know what to say about Belfast, to be honest. When I was applying, I didn't really look into it too much because it's quite far away. Like, that's one of the disadvantages. If you don't live in Northern Ireland, it's, it's quite a trek. And yeah, um, one of the best things about it is that it does have very early clinical exposure. I'm pretty sure you get your clinical exposure in your first year, which I think for any university, if you have early clinical exposure, it's instantly like a really good uni. Uh, obviously, the teaching has to be good as well. Uh, I've read mixed reviews about Belfast in general. Some people say it's quite a vibrant city. Some people say it's actually quite dangerous. So for that reason, I'm probably gonna put it in B tier. Like, I haven't got anything specific against them there's nothing massively horrible um but yeah there's, there's nothing that special either like it's a decent dental uni at the end of the day moving on to the next university now this is birmingham university now birmingham is infamous with being quite hard to get into like they're really really academically driven i think when i was reading up online they asked for like a stars and a's you know at your gcse level a lot of unis are a lot more flexible with the with the gcse results but birmingham is actually like really really on it it's a level requirements are actually aaa which is interesting i personally thought they'd be a star aa but you know whatever and with regards to the benefits of the uni, so they actually have a quite a new hospital that's opened up there. It was opened in 2016 and they do a lot of their teaching there. On top of that, I've heard the social life's actually really, really good in Birmingham. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not all just about the grades. And yeah, um, one of the things that I didn't like that much was when I was looking online, I was seeing that it didn't have very, very early clinical exposure in terms of actual placement. Like I remember it said something like 1% of your time is allocated to placement in first year. That does detract from it slightly, but overall I'd probably give it A tier because even though that clinical exposure isn't super early, the teaching is amazing. Like I've heard quite Quite good things from there and the social life is great as well which is basically what you want at uni you want to get taught well and you want to have a good life next up is bristol now bristol there's a soft spot in my heart for bristol because i actually really really like the city personally um i know that's not like the sole reason why you should be choosing a university but it's something to keep in mind um their entry requirements as well like aaa i do yeah i do think it is a good uni but again similar to birmingham like they, they haven't really got that much clinical placement in the early years i think they only really start like proper proper placement in like second or third year for me um i think the city is amazing like really really nice and the teaching's decent as well. So I'd, I'd probably put it, I'll put it in a high B tier, which is funny because this was my insurance choice when I was applying. Next university on the list is Cardiff University. Another thing here is the fact that it's just quite far out. Like I'm, I'm doing this from my perspective because I live, you know, in England in like the London kind of region. So the universities like this are quite far out and that was some of the things that put me off the uni. They're also, it's quite infamously difficult to get into Cardiff as well with regards to the interviews. Like they're quite well known with asking like really weird and wacky questions in your interviews to try and throw you off. But actually one of the things that I really, really like about Cardiff this year is that they have this uh, like insurance policy where if you put them as a firm choice, you'll actually have your place next year if you don't meet the grades this year, which I think is really, really amazing because not a lot of dental unis do that. For that reason alone, I'd probably put it in an A tier because I think it really, you know, that's quite indicative of how the university is like appreciative of the applicants, etc. It's just a good union in general. Like they have quite early clinical exposure as well. So now next one is Dundee, but I haven't got the Dundee logo. So I'm using Durham instead. Sorry. I know some people that go Dundee, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, we're going to say Dundee next. Now, Dundee's in Scotland and Scotland, I don't know if you've heard, has had a very interesting policy with regards to dental schools this year where they've actually added a year for a lot of the current dental students and they've deferred entry for all applicants from this year. So if you applied for 2021 entry in September, you will not go to university in 2021. You have to go in 2022. For me, that is something that detracts from the uni quite a lot. Don't know how much control Dundee has over that, but at the end of the day, it's something that you have to take in mind when applying to university and it can be quite problematic. However, one of the good things about Dundee is it has a gold teaching standard, which is actually quite common across quite a few the dental unis but it's still a very very big achievement but one of the things that i'm not too keen on dundee is just it's a bit you know out there it's a bit in the middle of nowhere and uh i don't really know the social life is that great out there and it, it doesn't really seem like a place i would really vibe to uh, nothing against the uni i'm sure it's great but yeah for, for that reason and because of the deferred entry thing i'll probably have to put it in, in the c tier i'm sorry i know someone that goes there so uh, no diss against dundee but just just the scottish unis in general it's like it's quite upsetting that they have to do the deferred entry thing and yeah next one is university of glasgow now glasgow always gets really really high in the uk rankings when it comes to like their teaching excellence etc which is interesting because then if you look at the world 
rankings, like the rankings of Dentini's is so different, which is why I tell people don't base your decision off of ranking tables because they're just not that good. But at the end of the day, I have looked at Glasgow. It does look like it has some excellent teaching standards. On top of that, again, it has early clinical exposure, which we love, of course. But one thing that does detract from it is its teaching style. So it does a mix of PBL and traditional teaching. And I'll be honest, they're my two least favorite styles of teaching. So PBL is problem-based learning and then traditional teaching is more just, you know, very lecture-based learning. For that reason, I'm not too keen on Glasgow. But I've looked online at some reviews and stuff and apparently the social life is actually quite good. So for that, I'd probably put Glasgow out a B tier. Now, next up, we have King's College London, which is uh, where, where I study, basically. Yeah, so King's entry requirements are quite high, comparative to the other uni, so it's A star AA. One of the things that I do like the most about King's is the teaching style and the research. So I think the research at King's is absolutely amazing. I don't think there's another university in the UK, like another dental school in the UK, that has such a high level of research as King's does. Again, if I'm wrong, you know, correct me in the comments, I don't mind, but that's just my personal opinion and you're being taught by some of the world leaders in dentistry and it is a great university in general on top of that you're placed in london which is a great city very diverse uh, you get to see a range of different patients have a, a load of different experiences and i wanted to stay in london as well so for that reason obviously i think you guys could have guessed this king's is going to be in the s tier now next up is leeds university now leeds is a an interesting uni um because they actually offer a very very unique degree where you don't just graduate with your BDS which is your bachelor's in dental surgery you also get like a joint master's which I think is really really cool I just think it's really impressive that you can have that joint kind of degree when you graduated within those five years on top of that they have very early clinical exposure and the teaching style is an integrated teaching style and uh, when you get taught you get taught within the whole dental team like honestly I think it's a really really good uni the biggest drawback from it is that you have to do the BMAT instead of the UCAT but if you're willing to do it and put the time in I think it's a fantastic uni and one of the best in the country in my opinion because of that reason, I'd probably put Leeds in the S tier as well. Uh, I think it's a brilliant uni, to be honest. Next on the list is Liverpool University. Now, Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. See, again, this is one of those unis that I don't actually know that much about. The only thing that I have in common with them is that uh, my dentist graduated from University of Liverpool. But I've heard it's quite a good uni. It does PBL teaching, which again, I don't really like, but you know, each to their own, some people like it. And it also has very early clinical exposure. I've said this so many times, but it is very, very early. I'm pretty sure it's their first year as well. On top of that, you also get to watch the world's best football team. So, you know, pretty good place to study. But yeah, if I have to be really honest, Liverpool's one of the unis that I know probably the least about. So. You know, for that reason, I'll probably put it B tier because I've never really heard anything really bad about Liverpool. It's a pretty decent uni overall. Next up is Manchester University. Now, I think Manchester is another great dental university. I think the social life there is absolutely amazing. Really, really cool city. Really nice university. Like, it's just quite a nice uni in general. One of the things that you do have to bear in mind is that they are quite heavily weighted when it comes to the situational judgment section of the UCAP. So they usually take people that are band one or band two. But yeah, it's a great uni, very, very good social life, quite a large campus. I think it's quite a big cohort as well in dentistry. So if you like a larger group, then you'll like Manchester a lot. And for that reason, I'd probably put Manchester into the A tier, to be honest, like very solid uni. Um, and you'll have a quite a fun time there if you study there for those five years of dental school, which are quite long. Next on the list is Newcastle University. Now, one of the things I really, really like about Newcastle is that they're very, very upfront with their electives and how they intercalate. Now, I know this isn't anything special for the dental school, but Newcastle seem to be pushing it quite a lot harder than the other dental schools do. I remember when I was looking at other places, you had to kind of scour through the admissions page to find a part of intercalation or, you know, doing an elective. On top of that, I've heard the social life's also quite decent in Newcastle, quite a few things to explore and places to see. So, you know, that'd be something cool to do. But one thing to bear in mind is that it is EBL teaching, so inquiry-based learning. And on top of that, they do highly look at your UCAT. So bear that in mind if you're applying there. For that reason, again, I'd probably put it in B tier, like solid uni, nothing amazing, nothing dreadful, you know, just a good solid uni overall. Next up, we have Plymouth, another one that I don't have the logo for. Apologies to Plymouth, but straight away, I have to say, you know, I'm just going to put Plymouth in the in the C tier. Um, and this is most, I'm just going to put X tier instead, but yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to put Plymouth in the C tier. And this isn't anything against, you know, the uni itself, but it's just because of a situation that happened this year with regards to the applications. So people applied and they changed the grade boundaries halfway through the application process, which I think is a little bit unfair. And I heard a lot of people complaining about it and, you know, to apply to a place that has boundaries of AAA and then suddenly it gets raised to A star AA, a lot of people just lost an option uh, when it comes to applying to dentistry. And it's already competitive enough where you only have four places that you can apply for. But to Plymouth's credit, they do have a really, really interesting campus. So it's right on the beach. It's a nice area to go to. However, it is quite far out. Like it's right at the bottom of the country and you know, you have to travel basically. And on top of that as well, one of the really good things is that it has very, 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 very early clinical exposure. I remember seeing on one of my friend's Snapchats that go to Plymouth, literally in like their first two or three weeks, they were already on the Phantom Heads. Now we're approaching the final two universities and we've got one right here, which is uh, rather interesting. I call this the uh, wannabe Kings Uni. I'm joking, of course, joking, joking, joking. Queen Mary's is actually a very, 
very, very, very, very, very good dental university. The teaching is amazing. The grade boundaries are quite high to get in. It is again A star AA, but to be honest, that's now the standard in London. I think they changed their boundaries a few years back. They have a new dental hospital that has been recently built and is actually really, really interesting to learn in and you know develop your skills in. On top of that, one of the biggest positives of studying at Queen Mary's is that you'll never have a shortage of amazing food. Like the whole area around Queen Mary's in general has such great food, you're never ever gonna be, you know, hungry or trying to find something good to eat. On top of that, quite a few of my friends go to Queen Mary's and they're quite calm people, so I do I do like the people there. The only one drawback about Queen Mary's that I'm not too keen on is that the campus is a bit far from like the main Queen Mary campuses because you're more based in Whitechapel than anything else. So that is one of the things that detracts from it slightly. And to be honest, it's not my favorite campus in the world, not my favorite area in the world. So overall, I'd say Queen Mary is, I'll probably put it in S tier to be honest. And last but by no means least, we have Sheffield University. Now, Sheffield is a great uni. One of the things that I like about Sheffield is the location. You're really, really close to the Peak District, a lot of areas to explore. And I don't think there's many other unis that can offer you that. On top of that, it has a very interesting outreach scheme. So you're not only placed in Sheffield, you're placed in different areas around that general region, which is quite cool. A lot of other unis, your placements are usually in the city that you study in. And they have a cool integrated teaching style, which I like. Uh, I'd probably put it, you know, in the A tier. The actual location is probably what I like the most about it, quite like countryside-esque. So yeah, that's the tier list. One thing I'd like to say very quickly is again, that this is just my opinion. Uh, do your own research for these universities to see what you like. And in general, every single one of these universities is absolutely fantastic when it comes to teaching dentistry. There's not a single university in the UK that teaches dentistry that I'd say isn't up to Standard. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you check out some of my other videos here and here. And let me know your thoughts about the tier list. Anything that you agree with, disagree with, just put it down in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.